Good morning. Um, I'm going to continue my uh, uh, expose on coefficients of drag and how they affect performance with a, a little sidebar here on roof racks. Um, last week, um, a fellow named Kutane uh, did a, a video on YouTube about uh, his roof rack for his uh, Tesla Model 3. And then uh, within that week, he did a consumption test. He drove his uh, Tesla Model 3 with, without a roof rack, with just a roof rack, and then with a, a pod on top of the roof rack that uh, uh, I guess it carried skis. Uh, I think it only had a, maybe a couple square feet of frontal area. And he was trying to demonstrate what the impact of uh, the roof rack and pod was on his consumption in watt hours per mile. And uh, he came up with a, <clears throat> a startling result of 11%. In other words, he went up from uh, 183 or 185 watt hours per mile, or per kilometer, excuse me, uh, up to 207. And he called it good, and he found it perfectly acceptable. I do not. And we've had some disagreements on uh, in the comments section on that. But however, uh, I didn't have any data on what roof racks did. And I was shocked at how small of a pod that he put on the vehicle and how big an impact it actually had. Um, so your normal pods that people put on uh, roof racks would uh, be even worse. In this case, we're just talking a couple square feet here. And uh, so let me backtrack a little bit. For some of you who haven't followed some of the earlier videos, right here we have uh, three graphs, okay? And the middle one is a Tesla Model 3, which has a coefficient of drag of 0.23. Uh, the one on the far right is equivalent of a Nissan Leaf, but all of these platforms are considered to be Tesla Model 3s as far as frontal area and drivetrain and so forth. So we're comparing apples to apples. We're just saying if you took a Tesla Model 3 and you still had the same frontal area, but you stuck a Nissan Leaf body on it, and uh, it would perform like this. <clears throat> and if you reduce the, and this drag coefficient is 0.28, and if you reduce the drag coefficient down to 0.18, uh, the performance would be improved by X. And the scale here is to 100 miles per hour in both in all three instances. And the, uh, <coughs> the little red sliver on the graph is the internal friction of the drivetrain and so forth. And the blue is the um, <coughs> rolling resistance from the tires and so forth. Now, Kutane performed his test in the winter in, I presume, Canada, and uh, he uh, was only driving 60 miles per hour, I believe, and that's when he got his results, and I think it was minus four. I'm trying to get this camera to follow me, minus four uh, degrees centigrade. So, but he, he did a good test. He, he went both directions and he did three circuits for each of his iterations. So I consider the data to be good, reliable data. And so I'm using it. Um, now, to preface my remarks, all the drivetrain of the car knows about are three things. It knows about these, this in, internal uh, friction from the drivetrain. It knows about rolling resistance and it knows about air resistance. And that's it. It doesn't know about anything else. Uh, these are the physical parameters that affect performance. And the amount of horsepower or kilowatts in this instance it takes to overcome all of these impediments to achieve and maintain a certain speed. And um, so 
baseline here, Tesla Model 3 at 60 miles per hour requires 12.5 kilowatts of energy. And it has a range of 360 miles and it's getting 157 mpg. So at that speed, it's, it's an incredible performer. Um, now, it just so happened that the 11% re reduction or the 11% impact on energy consumption from the roof, rock and the roof rack and the pad, a pod uh, ended up moving Kutenay's uh, Tesla Model 3 from CD.023 right over here to this graph. CD equals uh, 0.028. And the numbers fall right out here. At 60 miles per hour, this would take, instead of taking 12.5 kilowatts, it would take 13.82 kilowatts. Uh, its range would <coughs> be reduced to 325 miles from 360. And its MPG would drop from 157 MPGs down to 142.5. So, this roof rack and pod, with only a couple square feet, uh, is punching way above its weight. <clears throat> if you just considered, uh, from a frontal area percentage standpoint, it would, should only have an 8% impact, but it actually has an 11. Because of turbulence, uh, as you can imagine, the air flows up over the top of the car where it's the fastest, and where putting anything is the worst place to put it. Uh, so it has more impact because of that, and and then it completely disrupts the laminar flow over the top of the roof, and creates other drag factors. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting percent of increase in range that I pulled off of the internet also, um, and we've uh, enlarged this graph. Uh, over here is your coefficients of drag, and here's your speeds. So at roughly somewhere in here would be a Tesla Model 3 at 60 miles an hour, right there where I'm pointing, okay? And if you're going to move it down to here uh, by putting a roof rack on it, that's quite a, quite a movement. All the way from 0 .2, 0 0.23 right here, you're going to move all the way from there, all the way down to here. And that's going to be, uh, let me see here, 15% down to, um, uh, about 7% is what it's saying here. So anyway, uh, the Kootenay test is just a, a one-off. It's just one test. But it's indicative of what we're looking at here. And so I wanted to talk about it. I'm entirely against putting uh, anything on the roof of a car, uh, period. I don't think Tesla ought to introduce roof racks. Uh, the only reason they did is because they had a huge demand for it, and the customer's always right, and so they went ahead and produced them. First year and a half or so they was making Model 3s, there were no roof racks for them. Um, if you're going to carry skis, I suggested, uh, too bad they don't have an upside-down roof rack they can put inside the vehicle. And just put your skis um, on a little, a little, a uh, couple bars hanging from the ceiling up on the roof in the middle. You could carry your skis that way. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, is uh, you're going to put anything on a vehicle. A, a carry-all behind the vehicle is the best place for putting luggage or anything like that. Um, also, trailers are a really overlooked resource because. Most vehicles don't end in a perfect boat, boat tail to a point. There's actually an opportunity using trailers uh, with proper body modifications for the trailers to continue the slope of the air off of the roof line and off the sides of the vehicle and bring it back to a point behind the vehicle. And it's theoretically possible with a car and trailer combination to get higher range, lower consumption, <clears throat> higher MPGs, 
and so forth, towing a trailer than it is without. Because most regular cars <coughs> would have to be extremely long to, ex to achieve this ideal body shape. And once you put a trailer behind a vehicle that continues that body shape, you could have an ideal um, um, performance. So, let me see, I've got another graph to show you here. This is ideal. Um, no, this, let's see here. This is 0.33, and that's what we're going to do our next um, video blog about. And as you can see, this is where most cars live, uh, like the Chevy Bolt, for example. And uh, this is the reason for their poor performance um, over the Tesla Model 3. Tesla is, this is the secret sauce for Tesla Model 3, a coefficient of drag of 0.23. Uh, the engines and, and the batteries do help, but without this low drag coefficient, the car won't perform where, where it does perform. So, for example, a Tesla Model 3 at 100 miles per hour will get 86 miles per gallon and still has a range of 197 miles. But if you bump that drag up to 0.28, it's going to take uh, 45 kilowatts versus 38 kilowatts to do 100 miles per hour, and you're going to have an impact on range and MPGs. <clears throat> if you drop that drag down 0.05, uh, down to 0.179, you're going to end up getting 100 miles per gallon at 100 miles per hour, and your range is 230 miles. So, uh, it's all about the drag, folks, and uh, this shows it here. These graphs show it, and there's more, I got to put a graph out here for 0.33, and we're going to put one over here. I have it, uh, which is for um, uh, point, um, instead of 0.18, it's going to be 0.13, which is about Theoretically, about as low as you can go. You can go lower, but you really got to pull out some stops that make the vehicle um, uh, far less uh, usable on the highway. It gets extremely low to the ground, for example. Um, has front wheel covers on the outside. Extremely long boat tail, bring, bringing it to a, practically a point, and so forth. And we're going to discuss all that in a later video. But I just, to summarize, I wanted to say putting roof racks on a vehicle and moving the coefficient of drag from, in this instance, the Tesla Model 3 at 0.23 all the way to 0.28. Nissan Leaf is a very bad idea. And uh, <clears throat> I'm against it. I don't even think it ought to be legal. But these are other stories. It's a free country. And, uh, but I do want to give a shout out to Mr. Kutenay for doing that rigorous uh, consumption test, uh, which gave me the data to show this effect here. So we'll see you all down the road. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody.